we're going to look at the working parts of a 35 millimeter manual film camera so that you're familiar with these various parts when you start to use this type of camera. Uh, a camera, no matter if it's a pinhole or a film camera or a digital camera, basically is a capture device uh, for recording what is outside, that is taking a photo. And all of them control exposures in three ways. There is the uh, aperture, uh, the shutter speed, and the speed of film. And the aperture is the opening uh, in the lens, which we're going to talk about later in a little bit more detail. And the shutter speed is how fast does that shutter open? How fast do we allow the light to come into the camera? This could range from a thousandth of a second to many seconds. And the longer it lasts, the more light is exposed on the film. The third way is the speed of the film. How sensitive to light is that film? And just know that different films react slower or faster to that sensitivity. Now to uh, complete this video, you're going to need a worksheet. It should be passed out. And uh, I'd like you to jot down the, your name and the period and the function and, uh, of the part and any notes of the part. You turn this in right after class, okay? And there's two sides to it, as you see. So just do jot down the name of the part, the function, and any notes that might be important. So now let's take a look at those parts. The first one is the lens. And the function of the lens is to gather light efficiently for proper exposure. You're used to a lens, in a sense, because you've been using a pinhole camera, but that technically is called a lensless camera. That is uh, not does not have the same properties as a lens would have, which is constructed for the most part out of uh, glass. The, the better, more expensive cameras have a glass lens. Some cheaper cameras have plastic lenses. The uh, second thing, the part number two, is the focusing ring. And that function, simple, it allows us to actually focus that image uh, to, uh, to get a nicely focused uh, photograph at the end. Now, uh, what do you see inside the camera? Well, different cameras have different screens. Uh, if you take a look at this slide here, this is what is called a grid focus. And notice in the center of that uh, young man's face, there is a circle that has kind of a grid on it. And as you rotate that back and forth, uh, that grid will come into focus or out of focus. And that's actually how you uh, focus an image there. This, again, would be true on a digital camera. Uh, or on a manual camera. Uh, another one, another type is called a split image focus, and you see it there. And what that is, it's a circle again, and as you focus it, you'll see the top half and the bottom half slowly come together. And once they join, uh, you know that it's in focus. Most of the cameras that we have uh, in school here are of the split image focus. Part number three, are the distance markings. Those are found on the barrel of the lens. You'll see them there. These are extremely helpful. Uh, they don't put them on m modern cameras, I mean, uh, new digital cameras. You won't see them. But on the older cameras like this one, uh, you'll see them. And this allows you to preset any uh, image just by figuring out the number of feet. So if you're seven feet away, you can rotate that to seven feet, and you'll know that it's in focus. It's very useful. Uh, that, what it does is it actu accurately measures the distance from the film plane, that is the back of the camera, to the subject. Okay, now number four is the aperture. And the aperture is the opening that allows light to enter the camera. And these openings are variable. This is a significant difference from the pinhole camera, where you remember that all we had was a pinhole, okay, a tiny little hole poked in aluminum foil. We could not enlarge that in any way unless we took it off and actually poked a hole that's bigger or smaller. But in a uh, camera, the openings will vary, and it depends upon the amount of light that we want to enter and to be exposed on the film. So that's the first way to control exposure. Okay. The fifth uh, part is called the f-stop ring, and these numbers are called f-stops, sometimes referred to as focal stops, and you'll see them on the uh, barrel of the lens again. They're the ones closest to the uh, body of the camera. And its function is to set the exact opening of the lens. You're going to see that these are mathematical determinations. And uh, they, you can rotate this and make that 
aperture either larger or smaller. And you see here that you read these f-stops at that red mark. So as you look down on the camera, you're going to see a, a red, red-orange kind of a, of a slash mark, and that's where you actually read it or set it. Okay. The f-stop is the mathematical designation of the lens opening that allows light to enter the camera. Now, what does that mean? Well, it just means that it's not a random opening. It, you just don't open these things to, oh, I want a big one a opening or a small opening. You actually will feel that as you rotate that, it clicks through. And every click is a predetermined setting, and it's set uh, with this mathematical formula. And notice that they go from uh, the, the very small up to very large. And the important thing to remember is that the smaller the number, the wider the opening. So you have one here that is f1.8, which is the largest. And if you look at f16, that's very small. Okay? That's just the way f-stops are registered. But here's what happens with it. Every time you increase that uh, f-stop opening, so if you went from f5.6 there to f4, then you're going to double the amount of light. Now, if you go the other way, if you go down from f4 to 5.6 or to f8, you are going to have the amount of light. So everything in photography is either going to double as it goes up or it's going to half itself as it goes down. You can see here on this chart that it goes from very small to very large. And that, that is basically the progression of f-stops in almost all cameras. Part number six, and the second way to control exposure, is through shutter speeds. And on these cameras, the shutter speed is located on the top of the camera on your right hand side and you see it there and it rotates uh, on, on a dial. And the function of this is basically to control the speed of the shutter. So you can go as you see from uh, half a second or two seconds all the way up to a thousandth of a second. Now you're very familiar with shutter speeds. Just take a look at this. You remember this obviously. It's your pinhole camera box then the pinhole shutter works exactly the same way as an expensive camera. Okay? What did you do when you went outside and it was sunny? You counted to 30 seconds or timed it. If it was cloudy, it was 60 seconds. It doubles. Okay? If you had to go to another stop, as they say, it was even cloudier, you would guess two minutes or four minutes or eight minutes. So everything kind of doubles. And that shutter works exactly the same way. It is simply... Uh, primitive way of opening the, uh, the lens so that it can gather light. Now look closely at the numbers here and you'll see that they're going to double. Okay, uh, If we start at the top at one second, well it's going to have down to a half a second and then a quarter of a second and an eighth of a second, a fifteenth, etc. So these will all, they all double or they have depending upon which way we start. So if you start at a thousandth of a second the next available shutter speed is going to be one five hundredth of a second and so on. Now, if they double the time, that means they let in twice the light. So one second is going to let twice as much light come in as a half a second. Okay? A quarter of a second is going to let uh, of half of a half a second and so on. The seventh part here, and that's the third way to control exposure, is called the ASA uh, setting, and that actually refers to the speed or the sensitivity of the film. ASA means American Standard Association, and it was simply a group that got together and it tests film speed so that there's, there's a cross-the-board understanding of how fast these films are. Uh, that's something that's going to be preset on your camera. You shouldn't have to worry about it, and if you're in doubt, just ask, and uh, we'll make sure that it's set at the, at the proper setting. So the function of that is that it sets the speed of the film for the camera and for that uh, particular film that's in there. Uh, the ASA, or it's also called ISO or DIN, it's simply a rating given to the, the film that tells us how sensitive that film is to light or, as we say, how fast the film is. There are just two things to remember about ASA or ISOs. And the, that is this. Number one, the lower the number, the less sensitive the film is to light. What does that mean? That means it takes more time to gather the light. It does not mean that it is a worse setting. In fact, it's, the lower the number, the better the quality of the image. 
but it will require more time. Um, number two, film speeds, just like everything else in photography, either doubles or halves. So if you look here on this slide, you see that the ASA or ISO numbers look like this. They go 100, 200, 400, 800, etc. So they're going to double, or if you're going down the scale, they're going to cut themselves in half. Now, let's take a look here at the mechanical parts. Uh, number eight here is called the take-up reel, and the function of this is to wind the film as you advance it. You see there, uh, sticking the film into that reel, because you have to physically move that. That's a mechanical action, huh? You have to physically move it across the film plane. Number nine is the film advance lever. Once you have the film in there and, and the back is secured, uh, you're going to advance the film by uh, pushing it to the right, and you'll feel the film move uh, over to the, uh, the film plane for, for uh, exposure. So that's the, the function of that is to simply mechanically wind the film forward. It's very important to understand here that you do not force this. Uh, it's, uh, there are sturdy cameras, but at the same time, if you force it too much, you're going to uh, rip the film off or you actually break the advance lever. Number 10 is the release button. When the film is wound onto that uh, take-up reel, there's a little gear in there that prevents it from springing back. Uh, now, in order to rewind that film, we have to release it. We have to release that gear. So that's what this little button down does. And it's usually below the camera. And you have to push that down before you rewind the film. Number 11 is the rewind knob. And that's the uh, little knob that you're going to use to actually rewind the uh, the film. So that's its function, is to rewind the film. You're going to feel it. You, uh, you'll get used to this, because once you push the button, you'll feel it, uh, it'll give a little bit, it'll spring a little bit, and then it'll, it should easily rewind itself, because we want it to go back into that film canister to prevent it from being exposed to light. Again, if this is tight, just turn the camera over again and push the release button once, ag once again, or you're going to rip the film or damage the camera. So in conclusion, basically, um, you have to know your machine. This is no different than um, a sculptor with a hammer or a chisel or an artist with pencil and brush. You have to know how to operate these things using the proper parts. And the last thing I want to emphasize is this, that never, ever, 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 ever force a camera. These are sturdy things, as I've mentioned, but they are fragile. And you have to be aware that these things, when they stick, there's a reason for them sticking. They could be, their battery could be dead, or they could be at the end of the film, or some other little mechanical problem. And we never want to force it. We have to actually figure out what is wrong and then address it. So thank you very much. Um, I hope this helps you, underst you understand how these things are going to work.